Welcome back. So in the last video, uh, we introduced the idea of the one-dimensional diffusion equation, uh, saw that it was a kind of equivalent to what we would get through a brute force Monte Carlo simulation of the diffusion process. Uh, but we didn't really say uh, where that equation came from. And we kind of ended with uh, re the realization that to get that analytical solution, uh, we had to make a lot of assumptions that were potentially really prohibitive. Uh, so what I want to do here is dive into where that uh, comes from, and more importantly, how we can simulate this numerically, other than kind of through brute force simulation to, as a stochastic process. We're going to think about how we simulate it numerically um, by discretizing the process. So to think about how this works, uh, imagine that I've got a pool. You know, this might be like a you know, think of a fish tank uh, that's got a, something in it at a concentration, so a pollutant at some concentration, C1. Uh, and then I have another pool that I put next to it, uh, C2, that's at a much lower concentration. Maybe that water is completely clean. Let's assume that these are, are water, a pool with water with a pollutant in it and a pool with nothing in it. Um, Fick's law of diffusion, which is a fundamental law of physics, tells us uh, that the change in concentration with time, so the rate that the concentration is changing, which is known as the flux. So we're going to define flux as how that concentration is changing through time, is a function of the diffusion coefficient d and this dc dx. That dc dx is just a slope, but it's a slope of the gradient in space. And so if we here, if I look at the distance between c1 and c2, that's my dx. I look at the difference in concentration, that's my DC, and I have some slope of gradient there. And so this is telling us uh, that the steeper that slope is, the steeper that gradient, the faster the diffusion will be. And if, the, if there is no gradient, if the concentration is the same on each side, the, then there's no DC, DC DX is gonna be equal to zero, and there's gonna be no change in concentration over time. Uh, which is a pretty intuitive thing. The steeper the gradient in space, the faster something's going to diffuse across it. Uh, when there's no gradient, uh, there's no diffusion. And we're, again, defining flux as that change in concentration with time. Uh, and that's controlled by, again, that steepness of the gradient. Now, so let's imagine how we're going to actually solve this. So let's imagine we were going to interested in that flux, that rate, that rate that the pollutant is moving uh, from one side to the other. So let's solve this by discretizing the problem. Let's take this differential equation, which is uh, honestly a little scary, and break it down. So instead of saying the flux is uh, dc dx, let's turn that into a delta c delta x. And in this case, since we only have two pools, uh, the delta c is just the difference in concentration between one and two. And the delta x is just uh, the size of the pool. So we've discretized space into grid cells, essentially. And this is how pretty much all spatial models uh, of the real world work, is they discretize uh, space into pixels, into grid cells. And uh, so now we can think of this, we're just starting with two pixels. We can think about the concentration in each of them. And we want to move pollutant from the C1, where it's high, into C2. Uh, so to do that, we also now need to discretize not just space, but we also need to discretize time. So we want to think about, in a discrete amount of time, a specific amount of time, a specific amount of pollutant moves from one side to the other. And to do that, we're going to remember that flux, F, was dc dt. And so we're going to turn that dc dt into a delta c delta t. And so if flux equals delta c over delta t, I can rearrange that and say the delta c, the amount of pollutant that moves from one side to the other, is determined by the flux rate, which is what this equation is giving us times the delta t. So the flux is a rate, you know, uh, you know, moles per second or something like that, moles per, yeah, something like that. 
or grams per second or some unit of concentration per second uh, times the number of seconds that we discretize and that converts it to an actual like number of grams or number of moles that move from one side to the other. And that's really the, the crux of what we're doing. We, we've taken a, a model that had a, a DC DT and a DC DX and discretized it into a delta C delta X and a delta C delta time. Uh, so the change over space predicts the rate of change over time. And to round this out, we then just write equations very similar to what we did in the population model saying the concentration in pool one at time t plus one is the concentration right now minus this discrete amount that moved out over a discrete amount of time. And the concentration on side two is the concentration right now plus what just came in. So once we've discretized this into kind of essentially a packet that moves over in a specific amount of time, we can then just do a, a simple model, uh, future equals present plus or minus what moved. Great. So this next uh, is gonna show, this is a simple animation of putting this into practice. So instead of using two grid cells, I discretized a whole axis from minus five to plus five. And when I run this, uh, one of the simulations is going to be the analytical solution uh, to diffusion where there's an infinite length tube. Uh, and the other one's gonna be a numerical simulation where there isn't an infinite length tube where there's actually boundaries at uh, five and minus five. So we have this initial drop of a pulse at zero. And when we let that run out, we can see the red line, which is our analytical solution that doesn't have walls is continuing to diffuse away. And if we let it keep diffusing, it's just gonna keep getting more and more dilute and it's gonna you know, eventually get you know, asymptotically, the concentration is gonna go down to zero because it's just this finite amount of mass is able to spread out over an infinite amount of area. So this is all gonna asymptotically go to zero. By, by contrast, once I put walls there, we can see after only 50 time steps, uh, there's not much of a gradient as, at all left. So we're, we're gonna see, we're gonna converge pretty quickly on a, a situation where, where uh, over this fixed space, it's now just well mixed. So it's, all, it's pretty close to well mixed already, but we, if we go back, we can see this again. You know, it, one's hitting the wall and spreading out evenly. So that, that solution where we now have walls on it looks nothing like a Gaussian uh, kernel, a Gaussian probability distribution. Uh, so let's think about how we would do this more generally or how this actually occurred. So we took our assumption of an infinite tube and we replaced it with an assumption of a finite tube. So, that, so now we have a tube that has caps on the end. Uh, and then we took that finite tube and we discretized it with, based on some dx. Um, and now our, our finite tube uh, looks, with caps on it, looks like a discretized set of grid cells, which also uh, at this point in the semester should look like a vector. So you can now think about in a computer, at any particular point in time, we have a vector of concentrations. Uh, so we could draw a nice smooth curve of what those concentrations look like. Um, and furthermore, we don't just have one vector, but we have to simulate this through time. So we actually have a matrix. And so to, to do this numerically, what we would do is we'd set up a loop. And first we loop over time on the outside. So you wanna simulate this process uh, through time. And then within that, we'd have to loop over space. And so we, within, you know, we go through and say, okay, at the first time point, I need to go through every single grid cell and calculate how much is gonna move in and how much is gonna move out uh, and then move it around. And when I move it around, I push it into the next point, you know, move to the next point in time and say, you know, I'm predicting the future. And so um, looping over space and time as opposed with our population models where we were just looping over time. So to be able to, you know, to move from a 1D problem to a 2D problem, we went from a, a one dimensional time problem with one loop uh, to two dimensional space time problem by looping over time and looping over space. And then 
that C down there is just what we talked about before. C of I T is going to be C of I T minus one, you know, plus minus delta T. Now, more broadly, to wrap things up in this, this particular lecture, I want to point out that this sort of flux equation uh, that we introduced in fixed law is ubiquitous across uh, the sciences. So we, we will come across models that take this flux equation form uh, a lot. So fixed law of diffusion describes uh, the flux of some something with some concentration diffusively. Ohm's law, which describes movement of electrons. Uh, current is a flux, voltage uh, is a gradient, and one over R, resistance, one over resistance is conductivity. Fourier's law describes the, the movement of heat through systems. So the, the, the temperature gradient uh, determines the rate of heat flux with some thermal conductivity. And Darcy's law describes the flow of uh, fluids through porous media. Mm with the most common fluid and porous media we're interested in as environmental sciences is going to be the movement of water through soil. So, you know, fundamental equation describing the field of hydrology it says there's some gradient in water potential in space, some conductivity and describing the flux of water or anything in water uh, through soil. And that's kind of it, we'll, we'll kind of use this as a jumping off point to, to dive into other examples of flux models. Thanks. <laughs>